After losing their son on an island inhabited exclusively by dinosaurs, a couple hires the world's greatest archaeologist to help them find the boy. Today we're going to recap the story of the 2001 movie, Jurassic Park 3. On the outskirts of Sorna Island, during a trip to Costa Rica, a group of people take a boat trip and Ben takes Eric on a parachute flight. As they fly over the ocean, they are being pulled by the speedboat until the passengers are covered by a dense fog and the pair can no longer see the vessel. When he sees the boat again, Eric realizes that the pilot and co-pilot have disappeared and the boat continues on its way at high speed. Seconds before it crashes into a rock, Ben manages to release the rope and they are both carried by the wind to Sorna Island. Two months later, Alan Grant is playing with Charlie, the eldest son of Ellie, a brilliant paleontologist. The woman is married to Mark and, that day, she invites her work colleague to dinner with her family. The truth is that Alan has gone there to share with her a new discovery he has made about the location of the raptors and tells her that one of the members of his team is working on creating a chamber that emits a sound that can be used to communicate with these dinosaurs. After dinner, Alan leaves in, while saying goodbye, Ellie tells him that her friend can count on her whenever he needs help. That week, the man makes a special appearance at an archaeology conference, where he claims that what remains of the real dinosaurs is fossilized in the rocks. According to the researcher, real scientists use these resources as a source of study and what John Hammond did in Dinosaur Park was to create monsters through genetic engineering. When asked about the possibility of going to Sorna Island to study those creatures, Alan says that there is nothing in this world that could take him there. At a site near Fort Peck Lake, Billy and a team of young diggers are working to unearth the fossil of a dinosaur that lived 65 million years ago. After his controversial talk, Alan travels to the site to join the group and Billy shows him the prototype of a raptor resonance chamber made by a 3D printer. With it, anyone can reproduce the sounds made by dinosaurs of this species. While they are discussing this invention, Paul Kirby shows up and invites the paleontologist to dinner, where he promises he will present a great opportunity. That evening, Alan and Billy are introduced to Amanda, Paul's wife, and discover that the couple are organizing a trip to Sorna Island to celebrate their wedding anniversary. The businessman says he has chartered a plane to fly over the region and asks Alan to be his guide. The paleontologist immediately turns down the invitation, but changes his mind when Paul says he will donate a large sum of money to finance Alan's research. The very next day, the couple and the two researchers set off for the island together with Mr. Udesky, the pilot of the plane, Nash, the co-pilot and Cooper, who is there to ensure the safety of the team. A few hours later, the group arrives on the island and Billy is amazed to see, for the first time, a great diversity of living dinosaurs right in front of him. At that moment, Udesky announces that he is going to land and, upon hearing this, Alan becomes furious, saying that they can't land on that island. To stop the paleontologist from trying to take control of the aircraft, Cooper has to put it out. Then, when he wakes up, Alan realizes that his greatest fear has come true and he is trapped on Sorna Island. When he asks Billy why they have landed, the young man reveals that Mr. and Mrs. Kirby seem to be looking for someone who is stuck there. When he gets off the plane, Alan finds Amanda shouting for her son into a megaphone and orders her to stop making noise, because in that place it's like signing their elimination warrant. Suddenly, they hear the roar of an even bigger animal than the T-Rex and have to run back to the plane. Cooper is missing in the woods, so the pilot decides to leave without him. Nash is about to take off when the security guard appears, but now there's no time to stop the aircraft. Just then, a Spinosaurus emerges from the middle of the forest and is run over. After the crash, the aircraft is partially destroyed and begins to fall. The group then ends up in the jungle and gets stuck in a treetop. While Udesky is trying to radio for help, a predator appears and gobbles up Nash. As a result of the attack, the plane's skeleton ends up falling out of the tree, but no one is hurt. The Spinosaurus continues to try to eliminate its prey and destroys what remains of the aircraft, but the survivors manage to escape and hide in the middle of the forest. While looking for a safe place to shelter, they come across a T-Rex and have to flee once again. Luckily, the two monsters end up meeting and start a brutal battle, in which Spinosaurus emerges victorious. During the Clash of Titans, the team takes the opportunity to escape and Alan asks the couple to explain why they got him into that mess. Then he discovers that eight weeks ago Eric and his stepfather disappeared on that island during a parachute flight and the couple's wedding anniversary was just an excuse to convince Alan to accompany them to the island. The truth is that Amanda and Paul separated over a year ago, but the Costa Rican government refused to help them look for Eric and even the American embassy advised the couple to accept the fact that their son was no longer alive. So the only alternative they could find was to organize a private expedition and, to do so, they had to hand Alan a bad check. When he hears this, the paleontologist is even more furious, because not only has he put his life at risk, 
but he won't receive any funding for his research, since Paul is a bankrupt businessman. At this point, Alan starts an escape plan and informs Billy that they need to find a way to get to the coast safely. Knowing that their chances of surviving alone on that island are minimal, Mr. Udesky and the couple decide to accompany the paleontologist and look for Eric along the way. After a few minutes of walking, the group finds the life jacket Eric was wearing along with a camera. Looking at the footage, Paul discovers that his son has managed to land safely and his hope that he might still be alive grows. Then Alan and Billy pull the parachute and Amanda panics when she comes across Ben's skeleton. Terrified, the woman runs away and her ex-husband has to go after her. While Paul tries to reassure her, Amanda spots some dinosaur eggs and informs Alan of her discovery. Seeing those nests, the paleontologist realizes that there are raptors in the vicinity and leads the group far away. On the way, he realizes that Billy has been left behind and goes back to look for him. When he finds him, the man says he was photographing the nest and they continue their mission to reach the coast. After a few kilometers of walking, they spot a campsite and Paul suspects that Eric is taking shelter in one of those facilities. However, when he arrives at the site, everyone realizes that the camp is in ruins and there is no way anyone can survive there. While walking through the old laboratory where dinosaurs were bred, the survivors find the remains of eggs that have been hatched and even hatchlings trapped in incubators. Amanda is observing every detail of that place when she realizes that one of those dinosaurs is still alive. Suddenly, the animal moves and chases the group through the corridors. In an attempt to survive the attack, Amanda and Billy trap the raptor in a cage and the creature begins to emit a characteristic sound. Immediately, Alan realizes that he is asking for help and, very soon, other raptors will show up to rescue him. During the escape, the team ends up in the middle of a herd of Parasaurolophus which, on hearing the predators approaching, start running in the opposite direction. At this point, in addition to avoiding being devoured by the raptors, the survivors still have to pay attention to avoid being trampled by the gang. When they finally manage to escape from the area, they climb trees to hide, but Mr. Udesky is not so lucky. While trying to escape, he is captured by raptors and has his body pierced by their claws. When she sees the pilot moving on the ground, Amanda climbs down from the tree to help him and ends up falling. At that moment, two monsters appear and try to attack her. After helping the woman to safety, Billy discovers that Udesky was eliminated and the creatures were just using his body as bait to attract the rest of the group. Meanwhile, Alan is hiding in the roots of a tree observing the behavior of these animals. When the danger seems to have passed, he gets up to meet his team and ends up being surrounded by raptors. At this point, there is nowhere left to hide and no way to escape, so just as the paleontologist was about to be devoured, he is surprised by a smoke screen that leaves the dinosaurs dazed. Then a boy approaches and guides Alan to his hiding place. During a conversation, the man realizes that this is Eric and tells him that his parents are on the island looking for him. As a great scholar of the world of dinosaurs, the boy recognizes Alan Grant and the two spend the night talking about the paleontologist's books. The next morning, they both leave their hiding place and prepare for another day of walking. As he doesn't know where the rest of the group is, Alan decides to keep heading for the coast so that, if all goes well, the survivors will meet up there. Billy follows the same line of thought and guides the couple towards the beach. That same day, after a few hours of walking, Eric hears his father's phone ringing and starts running towards it. As he runs, the boy shouts his parents' name and the couple can hear him. They quickly go to find their son and, after crossing the forest, the family is finally reunited. Despite being separated by an immense metal structure, the trio hug and Paul asks how the boy found him. At that moment, Eric reveals that he heard the sound of his father's phone, but the businessman says that he was still on the plane when he last saw the device. Suddenly, the Spinosaurus that attacked the aircraft when the group arrived on the island appears and Alan orders the boy to flee. The two then run around the fence until they find a passage and manage to cross to the other side. When the group is reunited, the predator breaks down the wall and chases its prey, which manages to hide inside a shelter that looks more like a giant cage. After almost dying several times, Billy decides to tell Alan the truth and reveals that he stole two eggs from the raptor's nest. The young man says he regrets what he did and says he only took them to help fund the paleontologist's research, as the eggs are worth a fortune. Furious, Alan says that Billy is as selfish as the people who built the place and decides to take the eggs on the journey with the aim of returning them if the raptors show up again. While exploring the area, Alan spots a boat on the river and has the idea of using it to reach the coast. That way, they'll be less likely to be devoured on the way. To do this, the group has to cross a metal bridge that is about to collapse and decides to cross one at a time to reduce the risk of accidents. In order to check that the other side is safe, Alan is the first to cross and, after receiving his signal, Amanda goes after him. 
But when it's Eric's turn to walk over the bridge, the boy spots a pterosaur and despairs. The boy is trying to escape when he is captured by the animal, which decides to take him to its nest so that the boy can serve as food for its young. After throwing an object at the creatures, Eric runs away and Billy uses a parachute he got from the plane to get to the nest. The boy is being attacked by the hatchlings and has nowhere else to go as he is surrounded by a cliff. While fighting the flying dinosaurs, Eric spots Billy approaching and jumps towards him, grabbing his body in midair. Just then, the mother of the hatchlings returns to attack the rest of the team. Immediately, Alan and the couple have to flee and end up falling into the water. When she tries to reach them, the predator also ends up in the river and is trapped by a metal structure that falls on top of him. Suddenly, other pterosaurs appear and destroy Billy's parachute. So the man approaches the river so that Eric can jump into the water and lures the creatures away from the boy. While trying to escape the flying monsters, Billy snags his parachute on a rock and is left dangling. His only alternative is to break free and jump into the river. However, as he does so, several pterosaurs gather to attack him, so Alan rushes to save the boy. When he realizes that he is going to be eliminated, Billy asks the archaeologist to guide the family to the beach and is then swept away. Just then, another creature starts chasing Alan and Paul and they are forced to flee, leaving Billy behind. After leaving the cage, the group follows the plan of using the boat to reach the coast. Next, they will need to build a fire to send out a smoke signal and call for help. After another terrifying day on the island, the quartet has the privilege of seeing dozens of herbivorous dinosaurs of different species up close and Eric is completely fascinated by them. That night, they are still on the boat when they hear Paul's phone ringing again and manage to retrieve the device after going through a large amount of junk left by the Spinosaurus. However, after answering the call, Alan discovers that it's just an automatic telemarketing call and tries to get in touch with someone to ask for help before the battery runs out. At that moment, Alan remembers Ellie's words and calls his friend's house, but it's Charlie who answers the phone. The paleontologist then asks the boy to give the phone to his mother and suddenly the boat they are on is attacked. To protect themselves from the Spinosaurus attacks, the survivors have to take shelter inside a cage and the animal manages to knock them into the water. Seconds before sinking with the cage, Alan manages to speak to Ellie and reveals his location. While trying to get rid of the animal, the survivors begin to drown and Paul is the only one who manages to escape. Determined to save his family, he uses his own body as bait to attract the predator, giving the others time to escape. After leaving the cage, Alan finds a flare and manages to use it to set the monster on fire. Frightened by the flames, the Spinosaurus decides to flee and the businessman falls into the water. At that moment, Amanda and Eric despair, believing that Paul has been eliminated, but everyone is relieved when he turns up without any serious injuries. After resting, the quartet continues their walk and Eric hears the sound of the sea. However, before they reach the shore, they are once again surprised by a group of raptors and one of them starts sniffing Amanda. The animal suspects her of stealing from its nest and the woman asks Alan to hand over the eggs. After returning them to the female, Amanda walks away and Alan uses the prototype developed by Billy to communicate with the raptors. On hearing the humans call for help, the animals are confused and give up attacking them. So, after picking up their eggs, they leave without causing any harm to the group. Just then, Paul hears a helicopter approaching and a team of marines appears to rescue them. As promised, once again Ellie proves to Alan that she can be trusted and will always be willing to help her friend. When he gets into the helicopter, the archaeologist receives news that another survivor has been found during a sweep of the river and Alan is relieved to discover that Billy is okay. At this point, he has the opportunity to apologize for what he said when he learned that the man had stolen the eggs, and so the group is taken back to the United States. Looking out of the window, they realize that they are being followed by some pterosaurs, but they are not attacked by them. After they were released, these animals went in search of a new place to build their nest and Amanda wonders what will happen now that these creatures are loose and can fly freely around the planet. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you like the video, like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.